day everyone. For today's video, we will discuss about the factor theorem. And we will also discuss how to factor polynomials completely. Let us discuss the factor theorem. We let p of x be a polynomial. And if p of c is equal to 0, then x minus c is a factor of p of x. Meaning, p of c here from the previous discussion is our remainder. That means if the remainder is 0, then x minus c, which is the divisor, is a factor of the given polynomial. And for statement letter B, this is just the reversed interpretation of letter A, meaning if the given divisor x minus c is a factor of the given polynomial, then p of c, which is the remainder, must be equal to 0. Let us determine if the given binomial is a factor of the polynomial function. We have the first example, 2x raised to 4 minus 5x cubed minus 6x plus 2 divided by x minus 5. So we will determine if this given divisor is a factor or not. So for us to be able to know that, we have to use the remainder theorem to get the remainder of this polynomial function. So applying the remainder theorem, we just substitute the value of x which is equal to 5 and then simplify our equation it will lead you to our answer, remainder is equal to 597. Therefore, x minus 5 is not a factor of the given polynomial function. Let's go to the second example. We have x raised to 4 minus 10x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x plus 15 divided by x minus 1. So let's identify if x minus 1 is a factor or not a factor of this polynomial function. We will be using again the remainder theorem. Just substitute the value of x which is equal to 1. And then simplify our equation. It will lead you to our remainder which is equal to 0. Since our remainder here is equal to 0, that means x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial function. Let's proceed to the third example. We have 3x raised to 4 plus x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 12 divided by 2x plus 1. So the same process, let's get the value of x and that is equal to negative 1 half. Substitute negative 1 half to our variables here, which is x, and then we simplify our equation. It will lead you to our remainder, which is equal to 177 over 16. Since our remainder is not equal to 0, therefore, 2x plus 1 is not a factor of this polynomial function. So to sum up, it's easy to identify if it's a factor or not. The remainder must be equal to 0 for us to say that the given divisor is a factor. So if it's not equal to 0, then the given divisor is not a factor. Now that we were able to determine if the given divisor is a factor or not a factor, we will proceed to factoring polynomials completely. So how do we factor polynomials completely? There are steps that you have to follow in order for us to factor polynomials completely. And we will be using synthetic division in factoring polynomials. And also, we will be doing mental math for us to have a shorter solution, so let's discuss the examples. For example number 1, let us factor p of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 10x minus 8 completely. So for us to be able to factor this polynomial function completely, we have to follow several steps. And then we have the first step. You have to list down all the factors of the constant term. So in this given polynomial function, our constant term here is 8, and then let's write the factors of 8. Before we write the factors of 8, take note that to get the factors of 8, you have to think of two numbers that when you multiply, it will result to positive 8. So we have the factors, positive and negative 1, positive and negative 8, positive and negative 2, positive and negative 4. Then let us proceed to step number 2. 
we will be choosing among the factors listed and we will use that as our synthetic divisor. So actually this is a trial and error part because we don't know which factors of 8 is a factor of our given polynomial function. So to solve for this, we must write our numerical coefficients of the given polynomial function. Let's write here positive 1, negative 1, negative 10, and then negative 8. Take note that you always have to be careful in writing the coefficients of our polynomial function because it must be complete and it must be arranged in decreasing power of x. So since this is complete and there is no missing term, let us just proceed to synthetic division. So we will be choosing from the factors of 8, let us choose positive 1 as our synthetic divisor. So we follow the process of the synthetic division. Don't forget that we will be using two operations here. We will be using multiplication and addition repeatedly. So first thing is first, you have to bring down the first coefficient, that is 1. And then proceed to multiplication and addition. We will be doing mental math here for us to have lesser writing and lesser solution. We have 1 times 1 that is equal to 1 and then 1 plus negative 1 that is equal to 0. And then we repeat the process. 0 times 1 is equal to 0. 0 plus negative 10 is equal to negative 10. Then negative 10 times 1 is equal to negative 10 negative 10 plus negative 8 is equal to negative 18. Our remainder here is equal to negative 18 since this is not equal to 0. Therefore, x minus 1 is not a factor of this polynomial function. Let us proceed to the next factor of 8. We have negative 1. The same process, let's try to find out if negative 1 is a factor. Bring down positive 1 here and then proceed to multiplication and addition. 1 times negative 1 is equal to negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is equal to negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 1 is equal to positive 2. Positive 2 plus negative 10 is equal to negative 8. Then, negative 8 times negative 1 is equal to positive 8. Positive 8 plus negative 8 is equal to 0. So our remainder here is equal to 0, that means x plus 1 is a factor. Now that we were able to get one factor of this polynomial function, we will be writing these coefficients as the coefficients of our first depressed equation. The advantage of having depressed equation in our solution is that we have greater chance of getting all the factors of the given polynomial function. So together with the variables of x, take note that for our first depressed equation, that's only less than one exponent from the given polynomial function. So we have here x squared minus 2x minus 8. That is our first depressed equation. Then let us proceed to the next step. Let's just copy our first depressed equation here and then proceed to step number 3. If the depressed equation is a quadratic function, it can easily be factored out. So I know that you have discussed this lesson when you were in grade 9. So we will be equating this first depressed equation to 0 because our factors here are the factors of the polynomial function. So to factor x squared minus 2x minus 8, we must split x. So we have two parentheses here. And then look at the operation. We have minus and then minus here. So think of numbers that when you multiply, it will be equal to 8. And then when you add, it must be equal to negative 2. Let's just separate first. We have positive and then negative here. And then the factors of 8 that when you add will be equal to negative 2. That will be positive 2 and then negative 4. Here are the complete list of the factors of negative 8. We have here positive 1 times negative 8. Negative 1 times positive 8. Positive 2 times negative 4. And then negative 2 times positive 4. So these are the factors of negative 8. 
what you're going to do here is try to add all the factors and if you will get the answer of negative 2, those are the factors that you will be writing inside the parenthesis. Now that we were able to get the factors of x squared minus 2x minus 8, therefore, x minus 4 is a factor and x plus 2 is a factor of the given polynomial function. We are now on the last step. Step number 4, let us gather all the factors of the given polynomial function x cubed minus x squared minus 10x minus 8. Therefore, we have the complete factors. p of x is equal to x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 4. We have three factors here because the degree of our function is on its third degree. So the degree indicates the number of factors that you will be solving. Let us now discuss the last example. Let us factor p of x which is equal to x raised to 4 plus 4x cubed minus 9x squared minus 16x plus 20 completely. So first step, you have to list down the factors of the constant term. Our constant term here is equal to 20. So let's write all the factors of 20. We have positive and negative 1, positive and negative 20, positive and negative 2, positive and negative 10, positive and negative 4, and positive and negative 5. Proceed to the second step, we will be choosing among the factors listed and we will use that as our synthetic divisor. So again, this is trial and error. So let us proceed to step number two. We write the coefficients of our polynomial function. We have positive 1, positive 4, negative 9, negative 16, and then positive 20. Let's choose from the factors of 20. I'll choose negative 1. Let's try if negative 1 is a factor. Then let's bring down positive 1 here. Proceed to the two operations, multiplication and then addition. So 1 times negative 1, that is equal to negative 1. Bear that in your mind because we're doing mental math here. Again, 1 times negative 1 is equal to negative 1 plus 4, that's equal to positive 3. And then repeat the process until we reach the last coefficient. 3 times negative 1 is equal to negative 3. Negative 3 plus negative 9 is equal to negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 1 is equal to positive 12. Positive 12 plus negative 16 is equal to negative 4. Then negative 4 times negative 1 is equal to positive 4 positive 4 plus 20 is equal to 24. So our remainder here is equal to 24. Therefore, x plus 1 is not a factor. Let's proceed to another factor. Let's choose positive 1. And then we bring down positive 1 here, the leading coefficient. Then proceed to the two operations. 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. 5 times 1 is equal to 5. 5 plus negative 9 is equal to negative 4. Then, negative 4 times 1 is equal to negative 4. Negative 4 plus negative 16 is equal to negative 20. Negative 20 times 1 is equal to negative 20. Negative 20 plus 20 is equal to 0. Our remainder is equal to 0. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. Now that we were able to get the first factor, let us write our quotient here as the first depressed equation. We have, together with the variables, our exponent is just less than 1 of the given polynomial function. So, let's begin with x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 20. So, we will be using the first depressed equation in our next step. Let us just copy the first depressed equation, x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 20, then proceed to step number 3. Our step number 3 here, we have to use the first depressed equation as the dividend to find the other factors. Since this is not yet a quadratic, we still have to go back to the second step. For our step number 3, we will be doing synthetic division. So let's write the coefficients of our dividend from the first depressed equation. We have positive 1, positive 5, negative 4, and then negative 20. And then choose among the factors of 20. Let's try to use positive 2. 
bring down positive 1 and then proceed to the two operations 1 times 2 is equal to 2 2 plus 5 is equal to 7 then 7 times 2 is equal to 14 14 plus negative 4 is equal to 10 10 times 2 is equal to 20 20 plus negative 20 is equal to 0 our remainder is 0 Therefore, x minus 2 is a factor. And then we write our second depressed equation. So we have x squared plus 7x plus 10. So again, our exponent here is less than the exponent of the leading term in our first depressed equation. So we begin with x squared here down to the constant. Then we will be using the second depressed equation to get the other factors. Let us proceed to the next step. Let us copy the second depressed equation and then let's proceed to the fourth step. If the depressed equation is a quadratic function, it can easily be factored out. So we write here our quadratic equation. We have x squared plus 7x plus 10 equal to 0. And then we split x. We have two parentheses here. And then you can see that our operations here are both addition. So we will think of two factors of 10 that when you add will result to positive 7. So there are only two factors that when you add will result to positive 7. So that's positive 2 and then positive 5. These are the complete lists of the factors of 10. We have positive 1 times positive 10, negative 1 times negative 10, positive 2 times 5, and then negative 2 times negative 5. So if you're going to add the factors of 10 here, there is only one factor here that will be equal to positive 7, and that's positive 2 and then positive 5. So we choose here our factors x plus 2 and then x plus 5. Therefore, x plus 2 is a factor, and x plus 5 is also a factor. We are now on the last step. Let us gather all the factors of the given polynomial function so this is the polynomial function given therefore the factors of f of x is equal to x minus 1 x minus 2 x plus 2 and then x plus 5 so those are the complete factors of this polynomial function we have four factors here because the degree of our function is on its fourth degree that's all for today Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to update you on my next videos.